Hello guys, this is Mike from programming.org. In this tutorial, we are going to talk about lists in Python. Python list is pretty much a sequence of Python objects all grouped together, and the syntax for that is just putting everything inside a square bracket separated by commas. All right, and the cool thing about Python is we don't have to have the same type of data in a list. We can have strings, uh, integer type, um, Boolean, I don't know why you would, but you could. And let's uh, give it a variable name. I'm just going to say, uh, I'm going to say list equals, and this is how you set it up. I'm going to say, just put in some values. All right. This is just containing inter integers right now. So hit enter, and then if I wanted to print it out, notice it prints out as a list. And we have a lot of the same functionality as the strings because these are sequences. And we can also access these in a really cool way. First off, we can access them by giving the values uh, of the index or indices 0, 1, 2, 3. So if I wanted to get list um, uh, 3, it would give me that 0 right there. But what if I wanted to count backwards, um, and we didn't know how long this list was. Let's say it was like a thousand items long, but we wanted the second to last thing. This is how we would get that, which is really cool. We would say list negative two, all right? You're probably not used to seeing that at all, but what happens is it goes to the end of the list, and so this would be negative one, this would be negative two, negative three, negative four, and so on if it was longer. So that's a pretty cool uh, idea that Python had that you can access um, and you don't have to worry about getting you know, a list and then passing in the length of a list minus one or two, you know, something like that. But also if we wanted to find the length of this list, what we would do is call the len function and inside of there we would just pass in the list. And we should get a four right there. Uh, we can multiply it a couple times by two and see that we get this list uh, twice we can concatenate it with other lists Let's say list one equals list one equals two three four five uh, actually let's make some strings in there just to show you my is Mike alright so that's a valid list right there and now we can say list plus list one and now we have this whole new list right here and we can also have nested lists within the list that's what a nested list is we can let's just say list two equals um, and put Mike just have like a list of names uh, Jerry and then I'm gonna add a new list inside of here alright and it's gonna have two names in it it's gonna say uh, Betty Jo alright there we go so that is perfectly valid and notice if I wanna get the first index of this it returns as a string because that's what's in there if I wanted to get the index that holds this list watch what happens so it would be list 2 and I could either say negative 1 or I could say 2 both of them would return the same result and it gives me a list back and just to show you that I would get the same result let's put a negative 1 in there and so list 2 list there we go so we get the same result for both of those but it's not always 2 and negative 1, so that just happens to be the case here. Some other common things we can do with this list are pretty much all of the things that we did in the last tutorial with strings, because both of them are sequences and can handle the same thing. And the string is immutable, where a list, you can change the content within it, so it's not immutable. Let's say we can append to this let's go back to the list the original list up here 9880 what we can do is call functions like list dot append um, 
we'll say uh, five. All right, and now we can print out that list, and we have a new item at the end of the list. We can insert stuff at whatever index we want. So let's say list dot insert, and the first parameter will be the index, as you can see right here. And let's say I wanted to put it in between these two eights. I want to put a seven. So that would be zero, one, two. We put a two right there, and then a seven for the number we want to pass in there. And now let's print that list out again. So we have the seven there. And we can sort this real quick if we want. Let's say list.sort. And we don't need any parameters for this. Now let's just print it out. And we have it sorted for us, 0, 5, 7, 8, 8, 9. That's nice. If we want to get rid of the top element, we can just call the pop function, list.pop. And it got rid of 9 for us, so let's say list. And we no longer have 9 on there. If we wanted to pop from a specific index on here, what we could say is list.pop. And I want to get rid of uh, the 0, so let's just put 0 index. And they happen to be the same right now, but just know I was trying to get rid of this number zero, but I, it's in index zero. That's two different things. So that, and now let's print out list, and we have five, seven, eight, eight. All right, and now let's say if I wanted to remove a specific number, um, let's say list.remove, and I'm going to say eight, and now we have five, seven, eight. Alright, so there are some common things right there that we can do with the list. And in the next tutorial, I don't know what I'll get into, dictionaries or tuples, something along those lines. But just mess around with these lists a little bit. It's uh, very wide open what you can do with them. I love that you don't have to declare data types. And you can put multiple data types and even lists inside of a list. And you can access them using negative numbers as well. So, there you go. That's the basics of the list. And please join me in the next tutorial and subscribe below. Thank you guys.